What does a cattle farmer in Parkersburg, West Virginia have to do with your medical practice? In 1998, the farmer noticed his cows were dying and thought a nearby chemical plant had something to do with it. 14 years and a successful lawsuit later, data was finally revealed showing a chemical used by the plant called perfluorooctanoic acid, or PFOA, had been repeatedly dumped in the area. PFOA was found in water sources almost 80 miles from the Parkersburg plant, and because of its widespread production, dumping, and use in firefighting foams and many household products, it has now been detected in over 98% of the U.S. population. That initial successful ruling led to a class action lawsuit representing 70,000 people who had been drinking PFOA-laced water. Subsequent epidemiological studies and peer-reviewed articles showed that even very low exposure levels were associated with health effects, including thyroid disease, decreased fertility, high cholesterol, liver damage, obesity, endocrine disruption, and cancer. Many companies have phased out production of PFOA and blood levels in the population have decreased. But thousands of replacement chemicals have been developed, all of which fall under the umbrella of perfluoroalkyl or polyfluoroalkyl substances, or PFOS. Now, PFOS can be found contaminating air, water, and soil just about everywhere and are found in the blood of 99.7% of the U.S. population. Patients are becoming aware. They want to know if they have PFAS in their blood. They're asking what their health risks are. Will you know what to say if your patients ask these questions? What exactly are PFAS? Why are they used? Whose drinking water is contaminated? How do I screen my patients for PFAS exposure? The University of Cincinnati has developed a CME webinar that covers these topics and prepares you to answer your patients' tough questions about these ubiquitous yet harmful chemicals. Take this one-hour CME course today and become more informed about PFAS.